Welcome, my beautiful people, to another episode of Dino Basics, where we dig up the basics on some of our favorite deceased beasts. My name is Logan, and today we look into the basics of the true first monarch of Europe. Thank you to Cybromancer7562 for today's topic, the Torvosaurus. The story of Torvosaurus is a fairly complicated one, as we technically had fossils of Torvosaurus for decades before we ever described the genus. The earliest remains can be traced back to a discovery made by paleontologist Elmer Riggs in 1899, discovered in the U.S. state of Wyoming. However, these fragmentary remains of only a foot fragment and arm would be placed into storage and not assigned to the genus until 2014, almost 40 years after the genus was first described. The origins of the genus would not come about until 1971, when amateur paleontologist Vivian Jones would discover a single thumb claw in the U.S. state of Colorado, specifically an area called the Calico Gulch Quarry. This claw would be shown to paleontologist James Alvin Jensen, who is unfamiliar with what dinosaur this claw could come from. To try and find comparable fossils, Jensen would be directed to the Dry Mesa Quarry, where a variety of dinosaur fossils would be discovered. Some of these remains would be assigned to the massive sauropod Supersaurus, fitting name, but others would be assigned to a new genus of theropod dinosaur named Torvosaurus tanneri. This name would be described by Jensen and fellow paleontologist Peter Malcolm Galton in 1979. Now, following this description, the range of locations for Torvosaurus fossils would be a complicated topic. Remains have seemingly been recovered from a wide range of sites, including some in North America, South America, Europe, and Africa. However, due to limited remains from some of these continents, some only being assigned based off of a single bone or some teeth, the validity of these claims has been contested. For this reason, some argue against the genus actually living in modern-day South America and Africa, instead assigning them to Caracardontosaurs or other megalosaurs. As for Europe, while these fossils are more complete, their construction seemed to hint at a differing species than their North American counterpart. To account for this, a new species of Torvosaurus was declared, the Torvosaurus gurnii. The name Torvosaurus stems from both Latin and Greek including the Latin word torvus for savage and the Greek word soros for lizard, directly translating to savage lizard. Currently, there are two identified species of Torvosaurus, those being tanneri and gurnii. Besides location, both species can be differentiated by small skeletal differences, such as construction of their skulls as well as possibly the number of teeth in their jaws. Besides the former, other species are currently under consideration for the Torvosaurus genus, specifically Brontoraptor, which is considered a nomen dubium but has not been assigned to a particular genus, as well as Edmarca rex, which is still recognized but is doubted as a truly distinct genus. For the purposes of this video, we'll only discuss Tanneri and Gurnii. Both species names are meant to honor individuals. The type species Tanneri was named in honor of Nathan Eldon Tanner, a Canadian politician and prominent member of the Mormon Church. He actually had nothing to do with this discovery, so I guess the paleontologists just liked him. Gurnii was named in honor of James Gurney, the author of the Dinotopia series of books. Once again, he had nothing to do with the discovery. I guess they just liked the books. Focusing once again on Torvosaurus, this creature was a Saurischian theropod, 
and more specifically belonged to the Megalosauridae family. The Megalosaurs were an early group of large carnivores, first appearing in the early Jurassic period, almost 200 million years ago. Its founding member, the Megalosaurus, was actually the first formally described dinosaur, and would lay the groundworks for the establishment of the Dinosauria grouping of animals. However, if you know anything about Megalosaurus, you probably know for many years this genus is what was called a wastebasket taxon, or generic grouping to organize a wide range of different animals, in this case, theropod dinosaurs. For this reason, some question the actual existence of this family, particularly famed paleontologist Paul Sereno. Assuming their existence, the family is most easily distinguished for their long and narrow skulls, as well as being generally characterized as large carnivores for their time. The exact size of Torvosaurus is another tricky one. Focusing on the American Tanneri, higher estimates place Torvosaurus at almost 39 feet, or 13 meters in length, and nearly 16 feet, or 5 meters in height, weighing an estimated 5 tons. At this size, Torvosaurus would have been one of the largest terrestrial carnivores of the Jurassic, outsizing even Allosaurus, who was estimated to average out at about 32 feet, or 11 meters in length. However, there is contention on whether this Torvosaurus estimate is accurate, as these estimates were based on the previously mentioned Edmarca rex and Brontoraptor, who are not conclusively members of Torvosaurus yet. More conservative estimates place Torvosaurus at about 30 feet, or 10 meters in length, and only weighing about 2 tons. Still a very large carnivore for the Jurassic, and more than a match for Allosaurus. The snout of Torvosaurus, like many Megalosaurus, was fairly narrow and packed with razor-sharp teeth. This thin design seemed to hint towards Torvosaurus preferring to saw and cut into flesh, compared to the thick jaws and bone-crushing strength of later theropods, like the Tyrannosaurus. Despite this slender design, estimates still place the biting force of Torvosaurus at around 10,000 psi, quite impressive compared to other large theropods. Despite their long, heavily built bodies, it is believed that Torvosaurus was actually quite maneuverable. Their bodies were also fairly low to the ground, possibly able to aid in stalking through thick underbrush when ambushing prey. Ending these bodies was a long, slender tail, used for counterbalance and to aid in maneuverability. Their forms would be supported by their powerful hind limbs, which were fairly short compared to the rest of their body. Due to their limited length, estimates believe Torvosaurus could only reach speeds of about 15 to 20 miles per hour. Their forelimbs, unlike later theropods, were fairly well developed, ending in long claws ideal for slashing or grabbing onto prey as they attacked. Torvosaurus would have existed during the middle to late Jurassic, almost 160 million years ago. It probably would have lived throughout the western United States, specifically states like Wyoming, as well as areas of western Europe, particularly Portugal. Other remains have also been claimed in a variety of other countries, including England, Germany, Tanzania, and Uruguay. But due to these fossils being limited, this is inconclusive. Focusing on the established species, it is believed that the European Gurnii was the largest terrestrial predator to ever roam Europe, although some Spinosaurs were technically larger but we all know how complicated their diets have been over the years. Torvosaurus would have been the apex predator of its time, hunting down bulky iguanodontids like the Draconics, as well as armored ankylosaurs, including Dracopelta. Other smaller carnivores, like specific species of Allosaurus and Ceratosaurus, also would have competed for similar prey. 
In North America, it was slightly more complicated. Torfosaurus would not have been as uncontested as in Europe. In fact, it is unlikely Torvosaurus would have been the apex predator of their environment. Other carnivores, like the Sauropaginax and Allosaurus fragilis, were estimated to outsize the Torvosaurus. But this brings up the obvious question, how could all of these super predators coexist? According to paleontologist Oliver Rauhut, the answer is specialization. To avoid direct competition, it is believed different carnivores would specialize in different hunting styles and preferred different prey. In the case of Torvosaurus, their maneuverable bodies and short legs seem to point towards a preference for forests, able to ambush prey and chase them through the dense foliage. Meanwhile, the compact body and long legs of Allosaurus made them more adept at hunting over open plains, able to keep chase with faster prey or outspeed lumbering giants. This isn't to say these carnivores would live peacefully, though. Fossil evidence does seem to show that Allosaurus, Ceratosaurus, and Torvosaurus would fight and even kill one another, possibly over carcasses or even as a means for food sources. Despite outsizing many Jurassic theropods, Torvosaurus has noticeably lacked in terms of pop culture relevance, especially compared to Allosaurus and Ceratosaurus. This isn't to say it has had no roles, as Torvosaurus would land a handful of appearances in modern media, including documentaries like 2011's Dinosaur Revolution, video games like 2022's Prehistoric Kingdom, as well as television shows, including 2007 series Dinosaur King. Torvosaurus was not an easy dinosaur for paleontologists to understand, from exactly where it would have lived, to how it would have contended with other large carnivores, or even how large it could grow. Despite this, it cannot be denied how intimidating such a creature was. Torvosaurus was able to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with American heavy hitters like Allosaurus, and even dominate the European continent for millions of years. Perhaps as we continue to explore this ferocious killer, we can move closer toward a true understanding of this dinosaur. That's gonna do it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to leave a comment below what you think of Torvosaurus and if you've heard of this dinosaur before the video. Oh boy, you guys only had to wait two days for a new video. I hope you guys don't start getting spoiled. Well, holidays only come once, so back to waiting for a week. Speaking of, next week we'll be sizing down to explore the basics on the perky little herbivore, Dryosaurus. Thank you for your support, and see you in the next video.